Okay, let's cut some beads. So what we've got on here is a box with segmented rings made from hard maple. It has a threaded lid. The first thing we've got to decide is uh, whether we're going to just go straight beads all the way across here or if we're going to do something like this. On this piece I've done a 3 16 inch bead here and here at the lid junction and up at the top. I don't think I'm going to do that 3 16 inch bead because it makes it difficult for the pattern transition. Uh, one of the advantages to this is if you're going to have a lid that you want to see where the lid joins the box, then that bead obviously is at that point in that junction. And I could cut that bead on, if I wanted this lid to look bigger, I could cut that bead down here on the box instead of the lid, then the lid would look bigger so you can adjust proportions. This is a little mountain mahogany box and um, this is an example of that. So you see how much of this box is lid. In reality when you take the lid off the lid's quite a bit smaller because I've used that bead uh, to make the lid look bigger. And so that's one of the advantages of of doing that if you're going to do a lidded box that you want to see where the lid junction is. For this one I want to be able to use all of this for pattern and so um, I'm going to just play like that lid's not there. So the first part, first thing we need to do and probably the hardest part of this is cutting a bead either side of that joint such that you can't see where that joint is. So that needs to be in the very bottom between two beads and it has to be as perfect as you can make it. You don't want part of that bead being on here or on here because when you unscrew the lid you got a little sharp edge there and uh, it just doesn't work out so well. It's hard to get it perfect but you need to get as perfect as you can. So what we'll do, we'll start out with the lid off and cut that lower bead first. Have my beading tools sharpened. Um, orientation wise, um, the beading tool will be set at center, the tool rest height is such that the beading cutting point on the beading tool, let me put it right side up, will be cutting at center and then the handle will be low so that it's cutting in this orientation right here as far as the beads go. If you go too high or too low with the handle then you start to lose the, the nice round shape of the bead and so that's one of the reasons you keep that tool rest just right and it cuts better it's meant to cut at center height so let me adjust this looks like I'm pretty good I want to keep my tool rest as close uh, to what I'm cutting as possible and it it works best if you keep it parallel to the shape of the box. So since I'm just cutting this first bead and messing around we'll try it there. Run the lathe speed up. I also have a pair of glasses that I got on Amazon since I'm an old guy and my sight is not what it used to be. These are six power glasses. Now I don't think they're necessarily safety glasses, but what we're doing is pretty safe. It's more about 
being able to see what I'm doing. I also have my light a little bit lower than I typically use it. I like all kinds of light, but extra light seems to wash out the, the quality of the image a little bit. So I'm trying to do this with as little light as possible. And hopefully where I have my camera, I can keep my head out of the picture. Okay, so I want to cut that first bead with this point of the beading tool not right on that seam but just barely past that seam because I know I'm going to be coming back from the other direction with the lid and so I'm just going to touch that like that so I know where that is and I'm going to put the lid back on bring the tailstock up Now I'm going to go to the other side. Now, if you don't think you're in the right place with the beating tool, you want to avoid trying to push it sideways while it's in the cut, because what it'll do is it'll skate across. If you don't think you're where you want to be, then you, you bring the tool back out and then restart another cut. Don't, don't put pressure on it sideways or twist it because it'll skate across there. That's not a serious thing when your piece is at this stage, but if you get a whole bunch of beads cut and do that, then it turns into a little bit of a mess. So I'm gonna cut these beads just a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to take a look at it. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got just a little bit of a lip on the lid bead. And so I need to, to take a little bit more off the box part of the bead. So I'm going to start in there just slightly. Now I can't go too much because I've already got a lot of bead formed there. I'm going to finish cutting that bead. And what we have is what we have. Now I'm pushing the tool straight in when it feels like the tool is not cutting as well anymore. I'll just fishtail it a little bit. But for the most part, I try to keep my tool sharp enough, sharp enough that um, I can push straight in and it cuts fine. The more uh, of this you do, the more you misshape the bead. And I actually used to twist the tool just a little bit like this, and that's even worse. And so if you're careful with how you fishtail it, you're just rounding the bead, but it makes the tool cut a little deeper if you're in a situation where you think you need to be deeper. Now I wanna be sure that the tops of those beads are even because if I cut one deeper than the other one, then I'll be able to feel where that lid is every time I go across it. So we've got to start now. Uh, so let's cut some more beads. I don't know whether you can hear it or not, but once you get to the point where you're not cutting anymore, that tool makes a little bit of noise. And that tells you you're done cutting. If you go much deeper, you'll, you'll get in trouble. Now, hopefully you can see across the top of those when those beads go from flat top to round. You hear that sound? I'm, I'm going to push it a little harder this time so you can maybe hear that vibration sound. And feel it in the tool also. It's cutting pretty, pretty well. 
here at that time. So now I just want to go till I get there, and I don't want to go any farther up the lid. Let's look at those beads. Yeah, they look pretty good. Nice and round, clean cut. That's the beauty of these uh, segmented rings is you're cutting that side grain and it just keeps going. Now, most of this solid piece is, is going to get turned away. I'll put my 3 16th inch bead on there because it'll be painted black. Same with down here. I don't want any more of this uh, as part of my turning than it has to be just because I've got side grain and end grain. And so, see there's some tear out right there on that end grain. So let's cut down to the bottom now. Now, you may have seen some demonstrations where people will go mark three or four beads and then come back and recut them. I've, that's, for some reason that's never worked for me. I like to cut them as I go and because I, I don't want to have to stick the tool back in there unless, it, unless it's necessary. Uh, and that's worked fine for me. If I've got plenty of light and, and this magnification, I can see this point of the tool and I can guide it right down into um, the bottom of the previous bead. And so that's what I do. And then, you know, you can't see it very well on that picture, but I'm not fishtailing this tool at all right now. Typically, I'd have another light right here so I could see better. So I'm kind of winging it just a little bit, but straight in, just a little fishtail. Straight in, a little fishtail. You see, I'm lining that up with that previous bead. Got the handle down low. I can see a shadow across here when the bead goes from flat to round, and this second bead has got a little flat spot on it still. Just a little one. There, it's gone. on. I'm hoping you can see that on the video, that little flat spot on top as it disappears. Right there. I don't know if I mentioned or not, this is a 332nd cinch beating tool, which is the one that I prefer. In a box this size, I can get another couple of beads than I would be able to get if I were using a 1 8 inch one. Now my goal with this box is to have an odd number of beads when I get through. So in a minute here I'm going to count. And the reason I want an odd number of beads is because I want to have a center bead. So I'm almost down to that solid piece. Let's count and see how many beads we got. One, two, three, four, five. Thirty-one, perfect. And so I'm not going to cut any more beads. I'm going to call that good. It, it's got me down to here. Remember, there's a tenon on this solid piece that goes up into there about a quarter of an inch. Same on this side, on the top. And so I could cut that completely off and I would still have a solid top and bottom. So now I'm going to go to my 332 seconds, I'm sorry, 316 inch beading tool to cut 
the top bead and the bottom bead. Now this is another place you have to be a little bit careful because that transition needs to be just right. And so I'm angling my tool in at just a slight angle, but I don't want to go too much or I undercut that last bead. And so I'm, I'm trying to follow that contour on the box as close as I can without shaving anything off that last small bead. Now I'll have to rock this a little more because it doesn't cut as well as that little one. You got to be really careful because it'll skate too. I'm trying to cut more off the bottom as I rock it than the top. You can still, hopefully you can see there's a little flat spot there still. I can also see that flat spot when I put the tool up there. I can see that it's not fully contacting the, the uh, wood, so I know there's a flat spot. Okay, that's good. Let's go up here now. Material right there real quick it's bugging me okay I think we got a pretty good bead. Let's look at them here. Yeah, it's nice and round on top. It's gonna need just a little bit of sanding. That one looks good. There's a little bit of tear out right there, but we just don't get away from that. Now, I'm, as I'm looking at these beads, I can see three or four right there that have flat spots. And I want to clean up while I see them. Okay, we don't mess with them anymore. So now the next thing is, is, is this transition here. Now, as you see, um, this, the top of this bead and the top of this bead are the same, same height. And it looks fine. But I like to make this bead stand out just a little bit more, the top and the bottom bead. And so what I do to do that is I'll take this uh, skew, half inch skew, and use it like a negative rate scraper. Uh, I think it's sharp enough. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the top off of a few of these beads next to here. I want to be careful to make sure I don't make that too drastic 
and lose my uh, lose my shape, my contour. And so I flattened out a few beads there. Let's flatten out some more down here. Let's make that a real gradual angle there. I'm going to go back to my beading tool and basically just cut them beads down a little deeper. Paying close attention between, on, in this transition between the 3 16 bead and the 3 32nd inch bead because I want a really clean uh, joint between those two because if not, when I burn it, it it won't look right and when I try to ink it it won't look right and so I'm kind of concentrating on that I wish I had a little more light okay Okay, I think I got those. Let's go up here now. Look at that. That looks pretty good. So now, hopefully you can see it. I've got a nice uh, division between these beads. This, this bead and this bead's a little higher than the other beads. It's a little more prominent, a little prouder. Now, um, I can find the right tool here. It's the last one, right? So I mentioned this spot right here. The transition from the smaller bead to the larger bead on the top and the bottom. I want to make sure that is really clean. So if I'm unsure, I can take my quarter inch beading tool, which is larger than that three sixteenths bead obviously and I can use this corner of the tool to go down in there and just really clean that out and that's what I think I'm going to do there now I know I've got a really nice groove in there for when I burn that do the same thing down here that kind of scrapes the inside of this bead and the in outside of that bead and just gives me a really nice transition in there. Uh, you could do that with a skew if you're brave enough or you know I could even even take this 3 16 inch tool again and and just clean that bead up again. But I think we're, I think we're there. So let's see how we did on the lid. I got just the slightest little lip there, but it's okay. You can see I'm chipping off just a little bit, and that's that's livable. I can live with that. Um, one thing that also happens now is when you're doing a box like this with a, with a thread on lid, you got I need that lid to be on really tight 
when I start burning my division lines this way because um, I don't want it to move and it's pretty easy for me to loosen that lid up but it's really hard to tighten it up so that when the lids close the pattern all lines up and so and to do that you just put that on a flat surface and sand that and and so you sand some of that away and then that loosens the lid up so that the pattern lines up and you don't have to torque the lid on quite so hard so let's do a little work on the top of this now I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do I'm going to inset something in the lid some moose antler or something like that and so for now I just want to clear away a little bit of surface here so that I can make that bead closer to round. So I'm going to take my 3 16 beading tool. Now this is a... Now let's do it right. So it's important that you keep that tool rest so that you're not having to tip a tool on its side like that to make it cut right you want you want to be able to push that straight in and so what i'm doing is i'm looking down this edge of the tool make sure you can see that and and lining that up with the outside of this bead that's already cut because i don't i don't want to cut into that bead that way but i want this to look as close to round as possible And I'll usually start with this, even just slightly outside of that surface, knowing that as I cut, it's going to go into that surface. So, and then and then I'll twist it, twist the tool like this. Because I'm, I'm not just cutting a half a bead, I'm cutting more of a full circle. So, I think we got it there. There's a little tear out on there. But I think we're... I think we're there. So, I want to get rid of a little bit more material here. Okay, I think that's, uh, I'm going to mess around with this a little bit more, but I won't bore you with that, but I think that's basically ready to go to the indexer. I do want to cut this down a little. It just helps me envision uh, that piece a little better. I'm not going to do it with that tool. I said we were ready to go to the indexer. We are not ready to go to the indexer. We've got to burn the lines in there, the grooves first. So let's get this stuff out of the way. Okay, so this is what we're going to use to burn lines with. Uh, this is just laminated plastic that has been 
run through a disc sander and cut down to where it's about as thin as a piece of, oh, I don't know, card stock, construction paper kind of thing. So it's really thin. The thinner the better. And uh, we're going to burn it with that. Now, the other thing to remember is that these grooves need to be clean. If there's sawdust in them or if there's a little sliver in there that it's left over from cutting, then the burning will burn that and then it'll fall out and you'll have a big white spot. And so this is this is a kind of a coarse bristle brush, but it's uh, soft enough that it won't hurt anything. So a lot of times I'll just run that through there to clean that out good. And there are even times when I'll take a piece of uh, 400 grit sandpaper and if I'm not sure what I've got, I'll put it down there and do that. If my beads don't look like they're cut very smooth or I want to touch something up, then you know, that's what I do. I'll put that down in that groove and then just wiggle it. And that'll clean, that'll clean the groove out good. This also, um, the pens that I use are just a kind of a rigid felt tip. And so if your beads are very rough, it'll uh, fray that tip pretty quickly. So there's nothing like painting a smooth bead. Okay, I got that clean. Let's put a little air on it. All right. Change glasses so I don't get dizzy and fall down. I'm gonna run the speed up on the lathe a little higher. There's a couple of paces I want a really good burn. One of them is right here. So that's a good burn. I want a good burn down there. Now you want your glue joints to be really tight when you do this segmented type buildup because glue joints don't burn at all. And I usually have my dust collector on to pull that smoke out of here so I'm not sucking it up. But you can see that because that's really thin, I'm just burning down in the bottom and I'm not I'm not burning up the sides of those beads. I just want this to be a shadow highlight. I don't want it to I don't want it to show up. I don't want it to be part of the pattern or the design or anything else. I just want it to be some place for me to stop painting. Now Boy, those look pretty good. A lot of times you'll spin that around like that and you'll still see some white spots. And that's pretty normal. I'm still trying to find the best way to do this. But um, I'm impressed with that. That looks pretty good. So, you know, a little bit of sanding, a little bit of cleaning. <coughs> Excuse me. Goes a long way for getting some good burn lines. Now, I'm going to do a little work on this top and then we'll be ready to go to indexing.